2006, Jade Raymond, producer of Assassin's Creed, declared in an interview, Instead of using Arabian legends, we decided to take inspiration from a book called Alamut by the Slovenian writer Vladimir Batol. This book opens with words, nothing is true, everything is permitted. The supreme is my motto, omnia in numero et mensura. The origins of this sentence may be found in the work of the Orientalist Antoine Isaac Silvestre de Sessy, Exposé de la religion de Druze, Exhibit the religion of the Druzes, in 1838. In this text, it is mentioned that according to the Ismaili's teachings, a proselyte must undergo some stages of initiation, from which emerging that, at the end, he would forfeit the joke of any religion and become a true materialist, not recognizing any god or any moral constraint. However, it is only with Gustav Klugel's Geschichte der Araber, published in 1867, that we may encounter the phrase for the first time as a mere comment on Sassi's own articulation in the passage where it is said that for a student it is necessary to undergo at levels of knowledge to reach a ninth level and thus gain the supreme wisdom of nichts zu glauben und allen zu zu dürfen. Believe nothing and be allowed to do anything. It is not a coincidence that in Assassin's Creed Altar carries out nine missions before returning to Mass after the defeat of Rashid. In 1885, in his philosophical masterpiece, Das Volk Zarathustra, Nietzsche writes, nothing is true, all is permitted. And just two years later, in 1887, he writes in On the Genealogy of Morality. When the Christian Crusaders in the East fell upon that invisible order of assassins, the order of free spirits par excellence, the lowest rank of whom lived a life of obedience like of which no monastic order has ever achieved. Somehow or other, they received an inkling of that symbol, a watchword that was reserved for the highest ranks alone as their secretion. Nothing is true, everything is permitted. How about Vladimir Bartol? He was a Slovene writer from Trieste. He went to Ljubljana to study philosophy. Clement Hugh a somewhat controversial figure of the period, introduced him to the works of Nietzsche. Meanwhile, Bartol discovered the works of Sigmund Freud independently and was greatly interested in psychoanalysis. Graduating in 1925, he studied at the Sorbonne in Paris, 1926 and 7, where he met Josip Widmar, a Slovenian critic, essayist and politician, who invited Bartol to join the Yugoslav Front. Wittmar told Bartol about the tales of Marco Polo and suggested the legend of the old man of the mountain as material for a short story. This was the spark that ignited the idea for the novel Alamut. It would take 10 years for Bartol to study the historical material, write down schemes, drafts and four versions of Alamut before he finally published it in 1938. The story of the old man of the mountain in the tales of Marco Polo is the following. Inside the fortified and accessible castle, the old man had arranged fresh lush gardens of fruit trees, rich in canals and conducts from which fresh water, honey and wine flooded, and in whose avenues walked beautiful girls who cheered the air with their singing and their music. The Muslims who entered the old man's home were convinced that they were in the paradise described in the Quran and unfortunately they did not know that they would join the ranks of the ferocious sect of the assassins. They were completely subservient to the will of their leader, who had invented a system to reduce them in his power by giving them a certain dose of hashish. Once they fell asleep under the influence of the drug, the young people were transported in the fabulous garden of the lights. There they had blissful time cheered up by the abundance of good drinks and beautiful girls. When the old man wanted to use one of them to get rid of an annoying rival, he acted in the opposite way. He had the young people taken out of that splendid place, always put back to sleep by means of hashish. As they awoke, they grieved over having lost their paradise. So they went to the old man, who asked them, Where do you come from? From heaven, they replied with conviction. Then the powerful one ordered, Go, 
kill my enemy, and then you can return to the paradise of Allah. The murderers committed all sorts of crimes because their only aspiration was the enjoyment of that happiness. This is the perfect synopsis of Vladimir Bato's novel. Read the article on my blog, gabriel.wordpress.com.